good enough. Of course, we have such a large turnout today. The reception to this tournament was nothing but chilly. It was the exact opposite. It was flaming with passionate <laughs> Pokemon fans. And here they are. We're like almost filling up this entire place. We yeah. have to pull out so many more tables. It's great, but you know, it's just because there's another event running at the same time. So we have yeah. more than enough room and this is just great to see that all the fans turn out. Yeah, 26 players for really our first mid-season tournament. Talking to John, who's one of our coordinators for this event, he has only started Pokemon here six months ago. So this is the <laughs> six months into the Windsor lifestyle of Pokemon VGC. You can see all of our players there getting ready to receive their round three matchups. So round <laughs> three will be starting soon. Hopefully have team sheets soon for that. Yeah, I'm sure we will once we throw it to a break. But we're not going to do that quite right yet. Uh, we're going to just keep on talking. I want to talk about the Cornerstone uh, Ogre Pond. Yeah. Which is an interesting choice. We didn't see the Ivy Cudgel come out because there's nothing that rock was really good enough. But I think the rock coverage is something you might need, especially if we're going to see more ice types. The interesting thing is Cornerstone, the Cornerstone Ogre Pond has been the least played of the four. Really, that rock typing is interesting. But that grass rock type isn't super beneficial. You see a lot more use with the rock fire, with the rock water, and the boost they give. Getting that special defense boost from the water type, getting that fire type boost, from, or you're getting that uh, attack. attack boost from the fire type mode. So really the question is, they're good, but will we see rock stone going forward? I don't know if it's enough to change up the format, but it's a nice tech piece. Yeah, it's an interesting little piece of the puzzle right there. And one thing we were talking about earlier that we haven't quite seen played yet is the Glamora, if we're going to be talking about rock types. Yeah, Glamora is a Pokemon that really shot up once the Blueberry Academy DLC came out. It got access to Meteor Beam, and with that power herb, similar to what we saw with Armourouge, it's able to use Meteor Beam, instantly heal off that two-turn effect and just use it once, and then really just start setting up. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting because those setups are key. And of course, you it puts you in a weird scenario, right? Because the power of you want to try and take that thing down as soon as you can. But if you do, you activate its effect. And yeah. then there's toxic spikes on the ground. And now you have to deal with that. You can't switch out as easy. Especially if you're running Urshifu Rapid Strike, you have to be really careful to play around that team. And the team sheets are in. We have our next matchup. So let's start talking about this. Of course, they're handwritten. So please forgive us if we are taking a little bit too long to read some of these. I think that's Darone. Darone? Soup Hammer? <laughs> so anyways, sure. we have a D name. And then we also have Eric Luong. Uh, that's going to be our matchup coming up very soon. And... Just looking over these, Eric, oh, I see the gears turning in your head. What are you thinking of these matchups? Yeah, so on our one team here, we are seeing that Farigraph Ursaluna Blood Moon team. That's a very strong team. It's done great in all of the regional and the big tournaments. Farigraph able to get that trick room up, able to block those fake outs, block those priority moves. And yeah. that Ursaluna Blood Moon able to do a ton of damage. So that's really the cornerstone pieces of this team here. And we also have Ogre Pawn Hearth Flame, and then we're also using an Urshifu single strike, but the Ogre Pond's interesting because I feel like a lot of people go for the water Ogre Pond, but so this is the first time we're going to be seeing the fire Ogre Pond here today. Yeah, fire Ogre Pond is really good. It hits really hard. If it gets that tear up, it gets that fire, gets that fire type attacks, and it also has Mold Breaker, so it can hit through those abilities. So those abilities don't really matter to Ogre Pond Heart Flame. Oh, the Urshifu single strike also has the stellar terra type, which is interesting. Yeah, we don't see stellar very often. I don't know if we'll see much use of it, but Maybe we will, and maybe it'll be helpful to get off those big attacks. Yeah, so that team from Darun is looking very interesting here. But let's take a look at Eric's team and talk about that for a little bit. We have a Hatterene, a Sneasler, Ogre Pond, Teal, DDF, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and Cinero. But what sticks out to you on this team? Yeah, so in this, we're sort of seeing that Psychic Spam team. Instead of the Armors, we're seeing that Hatterene. A bit more tanky, a bit more defensive. But you still have that Trick Room, you still have that Dazzling Gleam, that Expanding Force, really strong attacks. <laughs> Sorry, speaking of Ogre Pond, though, we have There's an Ogre, Ogre Pond plushie out there. That's great. That's a, such a cute plushie. I love it. The Ogre Pond's great. We're also seeing Sneasler here. Sneasler is not uh, an uncommon Pokemon, but it's not, it's not the most played. You're looking at that Unburdened with that Psychic Seed, so we'll probably see it pair up with the Indeedee at some point. The Dire Claw, really strong. That Acrobatics does a ton of damage, especially if it tears into Flying type there. Yeah, I love Dire Claw. It is such a strong move. 
if you can get that effect to proc. It really is. Plus, we're seeing the Ogre Pond teal here with the Ivy Cudgel sticking with just the Grass type, but it gets that affine ability. So really there to shut down any Incineroars that may come out. Yeah, and do we see an Incineroar on this side? We I don't. actually don't think we, we do. We do not Pond. have an Incineroar. Yeah, we don't. So really, the question is, will that Defiant be much of a play here? And will we even see Ogre Pond out in this game mode? I don't know if we will. It, it does. I don't think he has any water types on the team. I guess Ursa Luna Blood Moon might Ursa be Luna what Blood you Moon, take that, against Ogre Pond. But. Yeah, is that normal ground type? I don't know if we'll see Ogre Pond be played here, but maybe we will. I think we're really going to see that combo of Ndidi F and Hatterene will be really strong. That Sneasler is really strong here. And what do you think is going to win? The single strike or the rapid strike of the Urshfrews? That is the question. The I mean, <laughs> rapid strike has been seeing a lot more play recently just because of Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond, uh, the water Ogre Pond, has been really taking out the need for rapid strike Urshfu as your water type attacker. So you've been seeing more of that Urshifu single strike being played more. But in the beginning of the format, really, rapid strike Urshifu was just better. Yeah, so we're seeing a Rapid Strike with the Ogre Pond Teal, so not the the Water-type Ogre Pond, which is interesting. But then we have the Incineroar. We know how that's probably going to go. We're just going to see it. Parting Shot, you know, Intimidate. That's just going to be the bread and butter right there. It doesn't have Parting Shot. Oh, this Incineroar has U-Turn. Oh, Ooh. U-Turn is a move you don't see on Incineroar very much anymore because Parting Shot sometimes is just better. You get you don't deal damage, but you get that minus attack, that minus special attack, and you get to switch out. Maybe they want bug coverage for some reason. Maybe I, I mean there are a lot of grass types in the format right now. You have Rillaboom. You have all of the ogre ponds. Really don't love taking a U turn and to the face. And psychic types as well. And the psychic types. I don't hate U turn. I think U turn is an interesting tech move here that maybe has gotten forgot about. Yeah, now I'm just looking at the terror types to see what the full breadth of this is. I wonder why they have. Terra Fire Hattery. Terra Fire Hattery is interesting. Because it's not question. really does much defensively, I don't think, and it doesn't really do anything offensively either, because they don't have they don't yeah. have any fire moves. So I am curious to see what the, the game plan here there behind the Terra Fire Hattery is. Maybe there's something I'm missing and something I'm not understanding. But maybe it's just to resist attacks from your Incineroar, from these other big threats. That's true. That could be move there but going back over here we have the tornadus with prankster don't really have they have they have tailwind they have taunt yeah. they have no weather no weather but which they have the tailwind isn't needed the bleak wind storm pretty inaccurate so we'll see if it really gets that off we did see in one of our early games that bleak wind storm get off all of its attacks and actually decide the game there yeah <laughs> the other thing that could be interesting here is that iron hands iron hands is on Daravone's team, I think that's how he pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. And that could be a really interesting Pokemon. And we were looking at the Hatterene does not want to take, probably doesn't want to take a wild charge. You don't want to, Sneezer definitely doesn't want to come into a close combat. Ogre Pond, Urshifu Rapid Strike. Oh, we have a World Championships. <laughs> oh, that World Pokemon Championships Day. London case. Very, very cool. I do really love that case. I'm pretty sure... I don't think this Cyndaquil... I have a Typhlosion plush at home that did come from <laughs> London Worlds that one of my friends bought for me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, people here from Worlds here. So there's a lot of good contenders out here. So this match should be very explosive. And you know, just to get a prediction, do you think we're going to get our first Game 3 here? Or do you think this is going to be another 2-0? If you just had to guess. I think these teams are very interesting. These teams are very diverse. I wouldn't be shocked if we got a Game 3 here. There's a lot of different change-ups you can make with these teams. You have a few different modes, a few different things you could bring. If Eric doesn't want to, doesn't trust that Psychic team, which really... I don't know what the counter for that Psychic team is here. There's not a lot. Maybe that Urshifu single strike is the counter there, but really that Sneezer can deal with that Urshifu. So we'll see what the play there is. Yeah, that's going to be interesting because that Psychic, now that you point that out, is going to be very tough for him to deal with. He doesn't really have any Dark type moves, no Ghost moves on his team either. Psychic can just go all the way there. Yeah, and here's the interesting thing. This is the fifth or sixth team we have seen without a Fluttermane. You're, cr you're right. You're we right. are seeing a lot of just lack of Fluttermane, and maybe that's people trusting, knowing what Fluttermane does, not needing to experiment, not needing to test, just trusting that this is what I know Fluttermane can do. 
I don't need to bring it today. I already know what it can do. Yeah, I feel like once we get to tomorrow, people might bring out the flutter me and you know, bring out the more typical stuff. But today, we're getting a lot more experimental, seeing what works. I'm excited to see what's going to work into our next match and what do you think is going to be the star here on each team if you had to pick two pokemon from eric's team i wouldn't be shocked if we see indeedy hattering lead it's a strong lead it does it would get him set up for sneezer if we want sneezer in the back and we do see it we there see it indeedy urshifu against ursa luna and farigarath oh that is going to be tough here but maybe if this fur giraffe can get off the trick room our Owen can be in a good spot here. Yeah, we'll have to see what the play here is. Yeah, I don't know what the exact play should be. But we'll see very soon. I have a feeling we're seeing either a swap out or a terror because there's only buffers at that point. And now, there it is. Urshifu. Urshifu swapped rapid out. strike coming out here. No, that's. Oh, the close oh, combat. Oh, the close combat. Oh, wow. it lives! Does it have a Focus Sash, or was that just lucky? It did that have was, a Sash, it did it have is. Sash. That's gonna be Focus Sash going down, defense falls, and now... Who's gonna win the speed battle here, between these Urshifus? Dazzling Gleam comes out and sets up the Trick Room. It's gonna be disastrous here. That's gonna be the single strike winning out the speed battle by large margin here. Now... We're going to see Swap back to the Hatterene. Try and get that Urshifu out of there. Try and save him for later because you know you're yeah, going to need him. Better. Now we're seeing the Terrace Heal come out on the side of Urshifu. I just get that type coverage. And I think we see that surg Surging Strike be committed here. And now it is Surging Strikes is going to be unleashed. A close combat as well coming out on the other side there. Okay. Who will win? Who will take it all right here? Yeah. Who will uh -huh. knock out the first Pokemon? Darvone withdraws the Urshifu. Now we're going to see what he's going to replace it with. There it is. It's back with the Ursa Luna. And if the read is correct on the side of Eric, this could be huge. There's the Terra Steel coming out on the Urshifu. It's going to be more of a defensive typing, I believe. The Terra Steel Urshifu is something we don't see isn't the most common Pokemon. I think it'll be interesting to see what we see come out here. Going for that helping hand, Indeedee, into the Terror Steel Urshifu. This is our Rapid Strike Urshifu. Going to the close combat, gets the knockout there. It's going to be huge. And now, you're going to want to get this Urshifu out of here as he has no defense to speak of after two close combats. No, that Urshifu is going to be like lacking those defenses. That Blood Moon Ursa Luna, about to see what it can do here. You know, that life orb, it's gonna hit hard no matter what. Just the question is, with Trick Room up, when will it move in this turn order? Old Blood Breaker comes out on the side of the Ogre Pond. The Fire Ogre Pond has been unleashed. There's nothing really... Going for Follow Me, trying to protect that single strike Urshifu, and going for the, another close combat into Urshifu? I think he's just trying to get all the use he can out of Urshifu, trying to throw a Fire Oh, because here. it's Urshifu's choice band. There it is. It's a choice band Urshifu, so really just locked into close combat here. I would think the swap potentially. I, I would look at the swap here. I mean, your Terra Steel facing an Ogre Plane, Ogre Pond Hard Plane that's going to hit you really hard if you're not careful. Maybe. But maybe at this point, do you care about giving up Urshifu? And maybe he's just trying to throw off Doravone here and just go all out on this Urshifu, but the Ursula Blood, Blood Moon. Moon comes out on the Urshifu. Oh, on the Indeedee. Indeedee! Remember that follow me from Indeedee, able to redirect it. There it is, that's gonna be huge. Now, will he get the close combat off, or will this Ogre Bond take him down? No, Urshifu there's a close combat! After Ursaluna takes out the Ursaluna. Wow, three close combats! This guy is a glass cannon right now. He is living on by a thread. Any hit will take out this Urshifu. Yeah, there's the super effective Ivy Cudgel. That's gonna take out Urshifu, no questions asked. But that Urshifu did its job. It took out Ursa Luna. It took out the Farigarath. For really, what else do you need from Ursa Luna there? But Darvon doing a good job at keeping pace. It's a 2v2 situation. This is not bad for either team. It's pretty dead even right now. It's See the Hattering. Hattering come out. It's still got the Psychic Terrain up. It's still in Trick Room. Oh, that Urshifu. Yeah, that Urshifu is low. Remember, we saw that Urshifu almost get knocked out before. 
live because of Focus Ash. I may have misspoke about how this is even here. This is actually looking anything but even. Now deciding between Dazzling Gleam, Expanding Force. Going for the Expanding Force, you would think Dazzling Gleam here just trying to get that double attack. But they might be cooking something else. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we are seeing the Grass Ogre Pond here. You don't commonly, you haven't seen that as much, the other two, but still good on its own. Yeah, but against the Fire Ogre Pond, they might be having a little bit of a rough time. Yeah, that's the question here, is what do you do? I also don't believe we have seen seen the uh, the Terra from the other side here. We haven't yet. Or did we not? I don't think we have. Oh, you're correct. We haven't. You see a Terra come out. So I would be shocked if you see Terra Ogre Pond here. There's the expanding force into the Ogre Pond. It fails. <sighs> it doesn't hit the Urshifu because it is a dark type. Wow. But also protected. We see the double protect. There's the Ivy Cudgel. Ivy Cudgel. Also going to be protected out. Into the Urshifu. I think maybe Darvon was trying to bring out the spiky shield on the side of the other Ogre Pond. No possibly, deal. possibly. But now, with the defense, defense is down on Darvon. It's going to be a full-on assault from Eric. Yeah, the stopping tantrum. Maybe we'll see the follow me. We are going to see the follow me here. Just try and protect that Hatterene for even longer. Really, you want it to do that big damage. And now, like you said, I think Darvon's going to commit the terror here. It's going to be it on that Ogre Pond. If it's on the Urshifu, I will be shocked. It's on the Urshifu. Wow, going out with a bang, the stellar, the stellar Urshifu. Urshifu. Does not change its typing. It keeps its typing, but it will hit with those fighting and dragon type or those fighting and dark type moves even stronger than it did before. Spiky Shield fails. Follow, Follow me off me. the Ogre Pond. Now, who is this Hatterene gonna hit here? Dazzling Gleam is gonna hit both. Gonna take out the Urshifu and deal a little bit of that chip damage to Ogre Pond. And that is looking to be a very tough position for Darvone. He could potentially maybe take out this Ogre Paw. Now that the Spiky Shield is down, he has the advantage on type. But against this Hatterene with the Psychic Terrain, it's yeah. going to be very tough. Trick Room and Psychic Terrain are both up, are both gone. Going to try and set up that Trick Room and the Follow Me again. Really does not want that Hatterene to go down. He is playing very defensively around this Hatterene. This is his win condition. He wants to ensure this one. He doesn't want to leave any room for Darvon to have a chance. There we go. There's the follow There's, There's the, the Ivy cudgel. cudgel. And it's going to come super swinging. Effective. It Ooh. lives on one with the Focus Sash. It, do it does have a Focus Sash. You're correct. And because there it is. Because it does not have a mask, it is allowed to hold the Focus Sash. Sets up the Trick Room. The question is, who is faster here? The Great Teal Ogre Pond is a lot slower. So that, that means, means with Trick Room, it's going to be fast. With Trick Room, but he might knock himself out here. Let's see, the spiky shield is up. Puts up the follow me again. <laughs> Wants to be followed. That Ogre Pond is an attention hog. And there's the expanding force. Expanding force fails. There it is, but it's not a physical move, so I don't think spiky shield comes into effect there. No, a spike, spiky shield will still block it, but it won't get that damage off it that it would if it was physical attack. We'll see if that Ogre Pond, is Eric going to go on the offensive here and close this game out, or will he just hold on for just a little bit longer? Yeah, he is in a rough situation here. We got to try and take out somebody here. That Ogre Pond, you know it's going to use Follow Me, so you could just go swinging at that Hatterene and end up hitting its mark anyways. Really could. Wish you had any type of coverage move so you could try. Spanning Force. Will he live? No, no, he will not. The second terrain is too strong. Eric picks up the first win here. And if you're Darvone, what do you do to change up your team going into the second match here? I don't know. You don't really have anything to answer that Hatterene. You were just not prepared to go up against these psychic types. I'm just looking. The only thing you have is Sucker Punch on Urshifu Single Strike, but... You have that Sucker Punch, you also have that Wicked Blow, but really, you have to be careful with that Urshifu there. Yeah, you don't want to just go all in, potentially die there, but that Urshifu is for sure being brought back here, because you kind of have to. We might see Tornadus committed next. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see almost a Urshifu and Tornadus lead here. 
I mean, you really need to get that tailwind up, get that speed control, but you have to be careful of the trick room. The trick room is in play here. The trick room is a factor. And really, it got Eric the win in that second game, with having that tr in that first game, keeping that trick room up. Yeah, that trick room was key to victory there. He played it very, very well. And his whole team, he played very well. The only thing I don't think he got total... Uh, use out of is the Ogre Pond Teal. Just kind of used Follow Me here to tank some shots, but it, it got him the win, so I'm not going to yeah, complain. Yeah, it protected, it protected the Hatterene. I mean, he didn't need to go offensive with it. But what will be interesting to see if we do see that Sneasler come out instead of maybe the Urshfu Rapid Strike this time. Yeah, That Sneasler is strong. That Sneasler can do a lot of damage here if you're not careful with that Psychic Seed. It will get the Speed Boost. It will get the Special Defense Boost. Yeah. does a lot of things pretty well here. Yeah, that's Sneasler, and going up against the Terra Flying Acrobatics, that could be doing a lot of damage, especially against the Urshifu, which yeah, is the one it, counter. It really could, and I'd be, I'm excited to see how they change up here. Yeah, especially another thing with Urshifu, that's your one ticket against Hatterene, but you're also weak to Hatterene. So yeah, it's a you scary have to be, battle. You have to play very carefully with Urshifu. Because if you take that, that full force Dazzling Gleam, you're I would be shocked if an Incineroar was, or if an Urshfu was able to live that. He unfortunately doesn't have any follow me rage powder, nothing to take any heat off of that Ur Urshifu. So no, that is true. It's, that it's, it's a very scary fight when you bring out that Urshifu to take out the Hatterene. Yeah, the Hearth Flame, the Hearth Flame isn't playing the follow me here, which is pretty common for a lot of Urshifus. Yeah, it's really common on the Ogre Pond to have that, but. I don't know how this next match is going to go. It, on paper, I think this is just going to go Eric's way once again, but I believe Darvone might be able to eke something out here if he plays his cards perfectly right. If he gets his setups perfect, he yeah. might be able to do this. It's all about this first little battle, or this first turn here. Yeah, the question is, can you do? Can you find a better use for Frigraph here? Looks like we are about to jump into the match here, so let's see what happens. Looks like we have a similar setup here, but both Urshifu is going to be starting out on the field. Now, it's going to be Fire Ogre Pond versus the Ndidi F setting up the second terrain. So what is paired Sorry. up with Ndidi? I did not get a chance to look at it here. I'd like to see what's Ndidi inside. Ndidi Urshifu. Both the Urshifus, all right. We got a little bit of a duel happening right here. So do you keep your fire type, or do you keep, there's the follow me. The follow me trying to take the heat off the Urshifu. Really, Ndidi's job is to set there, get the Psychic Train up, and then it's fine with going down if it needs to. Don't run. need Trick Room in this game. The Wicked Blow is going to take is. out the Ndidi, but I think we are going to see that Rapid Strike, those Surging Strikes go into that Ogre Pond. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Well, there's the Surging Strikes. There's a crit. There's the first crit. Take it out though. Oh, it's a multi-hit. It I is totally a multi-hit. It's a multi-hit. It's in the name. <laughs> yeah. So down goes Ogre Pond. Both Urshifu's still alive. Both at full health. There oh. is the Sneasler. Bring the Sneasler this time because it doesn't. They're not playing Trick Room. And the Iron and Hands. The Iron Hands. All right, we're having an interesting battle here. It's a shiny Sneasler as well. Maybe that go to the edge here. There is the seed also. So gets that special defense and gets that speed boost from a burden. So it's doubled its speed stat. Do you tarry, or you going go to go into acrobatics. He's gonna try. Just right to the Urshifu. I yeah, that is crazy. And now Iron Hands go on the offensive here. If you're Urshifu, do you detect this turn? Try and block something. The Iron Hands has fake out. What does it attack? That is the question. You're gonna go for the Urshifu potentially? Try and take that one out because you don't want to keep him up. He's gonna keep hammering your team down. Yeah, both Pokemon are really strong here. Do they I think the I think the Sneezer puts more pressure on you, so you gotta take out that Sneezer first. Withdraws the Urshifu. What's he gonna throw out here? This last Mon. Farigaraf comes out. Right. An interesting Pokemon. Going to Terra. That is the Iron Hands, Terra Iron Hands into the Stellar type again. It is. The Stellar type a second time. And 
I love to see it. Let's see how useful this should be. But that acrobatics doesn't do a lot into Frigraf. A good switch there. Surging strikes once. Okay. Will not get the knockout here, but it's going to do a lot of damage to that Iron Hands. That Iron Hands actually did not fake out this turn. Correct. But what did it do? We're about to see. Wild Charge. On who? Which one? There it is. And that is true. 8 I HP left on the Sneasler. Just Sneasler barely lives. lives. That seed. Actually, no, the seed was a special defense boost. Yeah, that, that Sneasler just... just able to tank it. I forgot, with the Psychic Train, that would have blocked Fake Out. That's correct. So There was no reason to play Fake Out there. Now, he's just going to try to take somebody down. The Sneasler being up is a disaster for Darvone. I don't know what you're going to do here. As you're going to lose a Mon either way. Yeah, it's a really sticky situation here. So we'll have to see what happens. Surging Strikes possibly into that Frigoraph. Really, that Frigoraph, I don't know if we'll be able to take three of those attacks. Withdraws the Iron Hands. And I think that was a read from Eric as he's going all in on this Frigoraph. But the Urshifu comes back out. I don't think that Urshifu will live in Acrobatics. Close combat, though. Frigoraph lives. And I think the Urshifu is also going to go against this Frigoraph. Oh, the Eats a Berry. Which berry is this? It is the Citrus Berry. It's going to heal up a bit of that health back, though. But is it enough? No, it is not. It's not Those enough. three Surging Strikes, one of the strongest attacks in the game. It's really hard to block. And now a disastrous turn for Darvone. He got no move off that turn. No. Swap out. That's all he really got. Fur grab is going to be a major thorn to the side, but Iron Hands and Urshifu are on the field. Those are his two most powerful mons. He wants them up. Post combat into the Urshifu, Surging Strikes into the Iron Hands. That Sneezler is going to take something out unless we see the Detect here. Let's see what happens. It's communicating. I believe we're going to see a big move come out. Do we see a Terra on the side of Eric? We could. The other important thing to note here is that. Darvone Urshifu does have the speed advantage. Tries to go for the fake out. Into you landed his it. Own Urshifu? Did he do that? It's a um, strange, maybe a misclick, or maybe he just already is done with this. I, yeah, I am a little confused here. Okay. There it is. There it Game is. is over. A little bit of an FF situation with Garbone, but fought well. But Eric just had him on the ropes the whole time. He knew his game plan. Yeah, Eric's team is really powerful. I mean, that Ndidi Hattering combo is incredibly strong. We also see that Sneasler is able to come in outside of a Trick Room mode. You have two different modes here. You have that Trick Room with the Ndidi, the Hattering, but you don't need it with that Ogre Pond, that Urshifu, that Sneasler can all work outside of Trick Room. Yeah, and he just really didn't have anything to answer the Psychic types as well. There's nothing to take down that Hatterene, nothing to take down uh, the Ndidi. Like, the Ndidi's squishy. He's yeah. guaranteed to lose that one. But overall, just a little bit of a bad matchup for Darvone. And yeah. great gameplay from Eric. It'll be interesting to see if we see Eric come back into our top cut again. I mean... He played a really strong team. We get a look at the crowd here. Everyone else in their matches taking down as many notes as possible. I'm curious to see where this goes next with what gets played. Yeah, I do you know. With the information now that we've seen these teams, you got to be thinking, how would you go up against Eric if you were, 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 were paired up with him? What do you do? Do you have... I feel like a lot of people aren't running dark types or stuff that can counter the psychic types. No, you really got to deal with either that Sneezer or that Hatterene really quickly, which is hard with Ndidi being out there. Ndidi blocking all of those damaging attacks and being able to redirect towards it. So really the question is you have to take those out. What's important to know is we are doing a top 8 cut, so you're probably looking at needing a record of 5-0, and 4-1. I'd be three and two is a really hard top cut today. So you need to look at getting most of your games won. We may see some three and twos, but really you want to look at that four one that four one as your cutoff point. Yeah, things are getting dicey. It's such a big turnout. We're gonna have a lot of games being played today, a lot of matches to go through. So there's even more interesting teams on the way as well, but we've seen such a variety already. I don't think we've seen a single typical set yet. Like the most typical we've seen is an Incineroar. We haven't seen the Raging Bolt. We haven't seen anything insane. 
No, and we're still games to oh, Fluttermane. I think the question is here. I think the real key of today is Ogre Pond. This, this little guy back here. <laughs> Ogre Pond has been such an important, po important Pokemon in all of our battles today. We've seen Ogre Pond be that key piece that is winning matches. And we've seen every type of Ogre Pond today now. We have. We have Deal. seen all four Ogre Ponds. So the question is, who can use Ogre Pond the best? I think that will decide our winner for today. And we're seeing more and more that this follow me move is just insane it's so good at manipulating the battle in your favor sure you're tanking hits on maybe not the most tanky mon but it's worth it sometimes just to keep the heat off of your main attacker yeah follow me is really going to be that important move and i'm excited to see what happens in our final two rounds of swiss today exactly and you know you talked about about uh, Mr. Teal Master, but what about that cute little doggy back there? You think we'll be dogi? seeing him today? Sadly, I don't don't think we'll see <laughs> Okie Doggy. If someone pulls out the Okie Doggy, I'll be shocked because that is a wild Pokemon. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if someone out there is bringing him. You never know. You we, never know. We read most of the team sheets, not all of them. No, we we'll may see. have missed a few. I'll we be may have missed one. <laughs> I'll be impressed if we see the Okie Doggy. But what I'm impressed with is how well this day is going, and we're gonna have even more impressive matches on the way after quick break.